Hello and welcome back to another episode of Getting Into Good Oxide. Welcome back, Sydney. Sebastian. Really have to figure out some new introduction. I think we're set. Uh, everyone's <laughs> used to it by now. <laughs> yes, okay, fine. Let's keep it for life. Then uh, we are back with the describe functionality. And in the last episode, we did manage to actually have some green tests here that worked according to our expectation. And did we or did we not already use two names here? I think we did use two names. Yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, we had this whole crisis at the end where uh, <laughs> our expectation of how it works kind of shattered, mm -hmm. mine at least. But True. Yeah, the way the algorithm works makes sense. It's just if it's correct or not, I don't know. But that's not really how decision to make, I guess. True. We just implement what's there with all the, yeah, strength and weaknesses, one could say. And I'm happy about that because then we don't have to think on how to fix this issue, actually, which uh, is good with me. Then let's have a look at describe. And I guess for us, the question is which test to write next, ideally a failing one. Yeah. And we only, we don't have so much preparation here in terms of tests there's no ignored tests uh, or failing tests there's really everything seems to be good we're ready to go ready to ship this but i have the feeling that's not entirely true so let's figure out why that would not be true yeah exactly so which block do we have we have this part gave up on we don't use that at all but we have it uh gave up on is if you are out of candidates if you found too many or if you don't have enough sp space for candidates anymore mm -hmm. because then you can't track these and then yeah then you have to give up and when you give up then it inserts this commit where you gave up on and probably relies on this finished depth computation to do something. And uh, probably for us, this will never do anything because our graph is so small. Oh, this is the current test, yeah. Yeah, it's just, we did, he activated this here in Git already and ran all the tests and nothing failed for that reason anyway. So it's really just, Nobody tests this. And then there's a lot of debug code here. And this is handling of matches. Wow, name misnamed. Or app refs. So there's app ref here. Yeah, let's let's go back to the example. Oh, let's go back to the right example. So, Abraf, instead of using the default of seven. Okay, that's the hexadecimal digits. That's completely out of scope for us. So the abref part here, hey, doesn't matter. I'm just thinking like this gave up on, we can implement this, but we can't test it. So it's not a great pick for us now. I thought this was interesting because maybe that's testable because we could produce a name that is misnamed, but I don't know what that means. Mislocated tag. Okay. <laughs> we can test this. Okay. <laughs> the 
the business out of, out of scope as well, because we, we kind of give it the, the, the matching hash map already, right? With the commit ID and the, and the tag name. That's true. I didn't read it all yet. I don't know what they chose. Do they choose the name of the object or do they choose the name of the tag? Of the tag? Not sure. <laughs> of the reference? Didn't get to that part. Because I think uh, here, previously by design, they used the name of the tag object. So... the name that was given by the creator. So it looks like we already do it properly because they we don't have, as you said, we don't have the notion of tag object. We don't care. We just take names and the names decide what we use as a name as well. And I think that they had the problem that they didn't use the name of the reference. They used the name of the object by design, but that was not great. So they changed it and this misnamed here, maybe that's now Oh yeah. So here they they check if the name of the tag is the same. <laughs> and if not <laughs> must be something like that. <laughs> All these cal calculations here plus five. I why why plus five? Why? It's so dangerous to me to, to do this. It's a, it's a pointer here, right? Like pointer plus five, it's fine. It just works. And then get tagged OID. Oh, but this would be something. Yeah, I think we might have some issue around annotated tags. Or do we? Like, like this seems to be something. What is this? So this is a tag object here. If you have a tag object, then get, get the tagged OID. Otherwise, use the OID we provide. And that's the commit. Like, I have the feeling that there's something special going on here. Like, if we have, like, uh, There's something special going on, but I think it's something the caller has to have has to handle. Uh, let's let's see what these pesky tag objects are. Get tag. So I should have a ton of these. Get cat file p. So this is a tag object. And it's also a, a ref name, right? So this probably can be found in dot get packed refs. Yeah, so this is our tag. And it points to this object. 
or one, that's the tag object, I think. So if I would cat this, I would get exactly the same. Yeah. But it does point to FBE to C blah, 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 which is the commit that is it is tagging. So you have this mm -hmm. indirection and that also happens to be FBE2C, that happens to be also mentioned here. This is called peeling. Uh, just for convenience, so that you don't have to load the object and then see what's inside, you already peel it and you put that info into the file because these are always stable, right? They're, they don't change. And if they do, they change identity. So yeah. And in our implementation, we also don't have to deal with this because obviously the one who wants to associate this name with this commit, which we see, we don't see that ever, yeah. but we see this one. And that's something the caller has to prepare for us. So we don't exactly. deal with that. Like there's no special, I don't think there is a special thing for us here. It's just that they always provide the long format if they think there is a discrepancy between the annotated, if it's misnamed or not, that forces the long format here. And that's kind of special. And we can't do that because we don't know if it's misnamed or not. And we won't ever know. So it's also something the caller would have to deal with. So that's where we are a bit different, I think, compared to Git. And that's the printing. Is that the printing here, the scribe commit? I think it might be. Yeah. Pen suffix. Yeah, that was the DGS. And it's interesting that otherwise it just takes the suffix from somewhere. Where does it take the suffix from? Oh, it's a global. Okay. So this global is probably, that's the dirty suffix maybe. Oh, where's that coming from? Ah, oh, yeah, suffix equals dirty. So here they assign the global to something, something else. Fun. Yeah, these globals really, it's so incredible. I would have would feel super guilty if I would write that because I know it's going to blow up one day right in my face and it's not going to be fun. But anyway, uh, back to yeah, finding the next thing. I think that's also not it. Gave up on. Seems yeah, I mean, I think isn't it gave up on though um, something we can do or at least have a special, I don't know, return value for this case. Or I don't know. Yeah, let's think about it. Let's let's try to yeah, let's focus on this. Maybe there is a chance. Our gave up on is here. That's entirely unused, but we have the same logic. And then I mean we can we can probably implement this. That we have a limit, um candidate limit or something. And with that candidate limit, we can make sure we actually run into this gave up on commit. Yeah, I mean, we already have the max candidates, right? Um, which is decided by the type of the flag, the length of the size. Mm -hmm. Where is the max candidates here? So that's going to be the ultimate maximum, but our actual max candidates can then be either something that is configured or it's that, because otherwise you will probably never hit it unless we really make Yeah, it. okay, true. <laughs> That's the thing, you know, like finding a reasonable test that is rad because of some implementation we have to make, even if we limit the number of candidates artificially, which we probably should allow so that we could implement something like it describe that allows to set the candidate count. 
even then, I don't know. Like, we can insert it into the commit list. And then the finished computation will pick it up and do something with it. Uh, that's all cool. I just don't know how to make a test that creates a different result then. Yeah. I don't know. Could have Git help us uh, by taking, by removing this special case and just seeing what happens when, or which test fails. This is the only thing I can imagine here. I uh, can run this in the background. The node should be smart enough to build everything and run the test. Yeah, OK, it did. OK, that will take a while. So while we are waiting, is there anything else? I mean, there's this block here. Stop if last remaining path, path already covered by best candidate. Okay, so if you have annotated tags, we don't know about that. And no list. Ah. An empty list. <laughs> good, good question. Um, it could be. Like that's interesting here, huh? It starts out at, at null, but then we insert something and then we pop, but we pass the pointer to a pointer here. See? Pointer, pointer. So it would be able to set that pointer to null. But it doesn't look like it does. I don't see it anyway. Don't know. So I don't know under which circumstances that list would actually be now. So here, look, there's a debug print that says, oh, I actually finished search, er, search early. So maybe we find that in a test. And, oh yeah, maybe I should also search in tests. Then we might find it in tests. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Nope. Also no test for that. So I don't know. Uh, so I would have trouble to implement this without a test to look at and without a way to, to know how to reproduce that particular case. Something that was added. Proof good to scrap performance for re 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 reducing revision listing. So performance optimization. Ah, I remember something that we can do. It's the insertion by date. Now that we have a working yeah, test, it's for the parents. Have a parent list and then sort them by date specifically. 
and that should that should work. Okay. And I think this was the behavior that we don't have that it really uses the most recent stuff first or prefers that traverses the most exactly. recent commits and then finds the most recent tags first. And I think that's really important for correctness. Uh, as I just read here in the in this wonderful, I mean, the commit messages are always great. Love mm -hmm. them. But I think that's what you get when you work with the mailing list and you boil the, every, a lot of work down to one commit and then you make, you describe everything here so that you basically just say git send mail or something and it sends the mail with the commit message as a message and yeah. i guess that makes perfect make sense. it a bit more descriptive yeah yeah I, I do like that um and two years ago there was this fix probably don't yeah. abort too early and there's even a A drawing here which probably is totally misrepresented by that editor mm -hmm. here hey i'm not reading this i'm just kind of looking for drawings <laughs> yeah Ugh, if it wouldn't disappear all the time all right so tests are done Oh, something is wrong. One CPU just for this. Not enough to turn on the fan, but uh, something went haywire. But I don't know what's going on here. It seems to be waiting for something. Okay, fine. It looks like diff order didn't finish, but that seems unrelated to the change we made. So I would assume yeah. that here for gave up on there isn't a test, which also means that, uh, yeah, commit list insert by date. Parent is sorting it is. Parent sorting it is. And we also don't have a test for that, but okay. So are we just going to implement it or? Yeah, I'd say. We found a test case. Yeah, let's say if you don't break an existing test, that's already kind of an indication that's probably okay. It's good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have a test case for that. Um, and given that this is also under tested, I'm happily under testing ours as well. Uh, and keep it practical, you know, like just make it work, move on. Uh, So yeah, I can actually get that code back. It was there before. So the commit time for the initial commit, I wouldn't get that, but I would wanna have this. and then figure out how to do the search, how to insert that correctly. But I think this should be as easy as inserting, oh, wait. Isn't that always inserting at the end, but um, yeah, it just has to be inserted in the correct order. Yeah. The thing is, yes, you're right. The previous problem was that it inserted it with global sorting, so to say it used all mm -hmm. items on the queue and should only use the items we know of. And this also means they always go back, but maybe not at the very end, but maybe before that. And we should be able to do that too, because we can limit the binary search on just a, a subsection maybe of that queue, which is a deck. Okay, but anyway, the good thing is that will definitely break a test if you do it incorrectly. So, 
tree, parent, anything else. So that here is the parent ID. Oh, thank God it did it correctly. I thought now it renames the field maybe, but it does the right thing, cool. And now it always pushes back, but we want to push it back to the right spot. And we have to, we see every, we see every parent one at a time. We don't see all parents at once or don't have them at once in a, in a vector or something. So it's yeah. different. And I don't really, yeah, let, let's see how to implement that. Chance of accidental breakage. Hi. I think I did this. Something like that. Parent buff. Sorry. Necessity. And now I oh, yeah, right, this is an iterator and not an object, so every axis, even if it's read only, will change it. And I think that should already compile. Cool. And now for the cases. Uh, if we haven't seen it already, then this stays exactly as it is. But if we have seen it already, we want to push it back in such a way that it gets sorted by date uh, based on looking only at the things we pushed so far or something like that. So the queue insertion order should ideally be based on Something like, yeah, the end we have seen, something like that, but we can't. We can't limit the binary search, or can we? Yeah, we can. We can limit the binary search to only the, the last entries, and then we can insert it at the right spot. By slicing it first, you mean? Or... Yeah. For, I mean, let's mm -hmm. get the code for the binary search. That would help. Eh, where is the oh yeah, annotation? Here. Uh, I've changed everything so much that I have trouble finding this. Here it is. Let's get the binary search. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that should work, like you said. So the end of the queue is the queue length. And then everything we push is something we wanna we wanna search for. Yeah. <clears throat> And it's about the position then that the binary search re reveals compared to the end. Uh, so this should be from the end to whatever. Then we find a position that's relative to the end. And then we can either push back or insert, I guess. It would have to be insert, right? Like this is like at could also be one past the end of the the queue. And then we could also push back, but insert would do the same thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just use insert. We don't have to do that logic. I think it will do that logic internally anyway. 
even though I checked one day what insert does and I never saw pushback happening there, but probably it mm -hmm. was just hidden from my naive eyes. Ultimately, it shouldn't matter performance wise. It should not, but I had the feeling it did matter. So I, <laughs> I did end up <laughs> checking for this case and I pushed back by hand because that seemed to be much faster somehow, but mm -hmm. fortunately that code ultimately did not survive. It was just some intermediate stuff that was weird and kind of wrong. So yeah, but I do remember, <laughs> and I'm always like, ah, oh, should that be pushed back if it's at the end? Um, but I wouldn't do that here. Uh, okay, so now it should be insert at, and the parent, uh, sorry, say again. Isn't it plus at plus end? Because um, the at is relative to the, yeah, right? Yeah, good catch, good catch. Um, that should be it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just that we also have to change the type of what's in the queue to also have the time. So here we want this to be, and it should always be in the front, but this initial commit is popped anyway. So it doesn't matter. But you just give it a, give it a, give it something. <laughs> give it something. I mean, the right value would be something like uh, u32 max, which I think is the time uh, seconds since epoch. I was just thinking. <laughs> and another breaking change. Sorry for that. Second since unique epoch, that is U32. <laughs> uh, with the small screen real estate here with this huge font, you barely see enough to, to do these things. Yeah, it should be the max in. That would be the right value. U32 max. That's also something that is very, very nice, by the way, in Rust, that it's kind of easy and obvious to get max min values for the respective types, which yeah. I remember to be much harder in C++. Like you always had to fiddle stuff with the standard library and whatnot. And here you do what you feel you should, you know, just how, how it should be somehow. It's the intuitive way. Um, so yeah. Makes no difference, but just to indicate, yeah, that should be the most recent one. But I don't know, it doesn't, shouldn't matter. I don't know. Just leave it, just leave it, move on. And then here we get the time, that commit time, that doesn't matter. And now, now it finally matters, the commit time, just for this little piece here. It's also kind of a complicated code, you know, during a binary search for something that is only ever, like mostly one commit, one parent, maybe two parents, Sometimes yeah. maybe three. But at least that way you can handle it right there. Otherwise you'd have to have some uh, uh, like flag outside of the loop or, or I don't know, some vector you collect as parents and um, yeah. I mean, iterators are pretty, pretty neat in Rust, aren't they? So maybe they have something for us because you could just iterate it and then see if there's a min of something or a max by oh look min by max by and what does that return ah it returns the item itself 
unfortunately. Yeah. So we could get the item and you could enumerate it and then you would get the offset. So you could do something like either enumerate and then we want the highest value. So max by. Why do I why do I not get that? Oh. Is it really there? Am I getting this wrong? Min by key? Is there max by key? Yes. Max by that gets two items. I think that's this, that's exactly this here. Binary search by. No, it's not the right thing. It takes two items here. And by key, by key, yeah, returns to key. Hmm. Yeah, I think that can't be used easily because that only compares items that are in the list or in the iteration and not items that are outside. Yeah, so it's probably probably binary search is still the way to go. Fine, code that is already there, can use it. So now we should get the insertion point and we can just use that date to insert it. And that's ascending, we want a descending search, so yeah, maybe that's that's that. Okay, this should work. Yeah, should work. I was surprised that this actually worked. Okay. Expected use size found. Well, that is a use size. What's the problem here? Ah, it found it found a range from, but it wanted a use size. So you cannot. This is a vec deck, so you cannot do that. You okay. cannot limit the binary. Uh, slice it in general, or you cannot use that syntax. You cannot slice it. I mean, you cannot slice it with a range. You can index it. You cannot index it with a range. That's the answer, which makes sense because that range could be these things are not overlapping and there's this midpoint thing and then this might not be a valid, a valid range for it. Uh, yeah, well. And we can just search it maybe by hand, like the min max thing can also do this by hand. Uh, yeah, why not? True. Oh, but I still can't, I still can't index it like this. So I can't just get it, get items from the end. You know, then I guess what you have to do is use a separate, use a separate vector and just, Bite the bullet, have a parent vector, Just sort like that. that. Fine. And now it's like the traversal code. And this also means that our queue doesn't need that annoying time anymore. We, so just, we only need it for that particular sorting. Yes. Cool. I think that's that's nicer.
And now we can put the parents along with their date. We have to figure this to do out, unfortunately. Now we use the date. And we can Okay, two things. First of all, we only need to do this at all if we, like in this case here, we don't have to do this. Only when we want to insert something on the queue, we have to deal mm -hmm. with the parent here. And we probably want to clear the parents factor. beforehand and then oh yeah we can't insert this onto the queue right away we have to wait have to collect it and then we kind of have extra work with the queue because then we look it up twice uh, sorry, extra work with the scene hash map. No, we don't have to look it up twice. We know it's not seen before because we are here. Then we can just insert it. Yeah, okay. Still kind of extra work. But should be fine. But this thing here goes away. That's good. Monstrosity. This goes away too. And instead, parents push parent ID parent commit date like this. Okay. So now you have that to do the loop, we sort them and, and chain them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I just deleted the sorting code. But fine. Parents sort by. Why is there no? There's sort by. It's just IntelliJ that doesn't see that so quickly. Uh, then we have entry one A B. And then a one, that's the time comp with b one, and that's now ascending. But we want to but we want it in reverse order, okay. And now we can just push it onto the queue. And have to remember it in scene. Right. Yes. Okay. So pushing onto the queue. Queue extend. And the flex, that's the flex from up here. Okay, we have them. Oh, right. That's also always new flex. Um, yeah, so just copy this essentially. Q extend parents. So that's ordered parents either map. E zero and that's copy I think. I am error the date exactly. And then scene. It's mapping from the object ID to the flags. And that just gets the flags by object ID. So scene extend parents either map uh, 
enel and max. So giving it tuples inserts these as keys. <coughs> and that's kind of shorthand. Okay. So this should be sorting. Okay. So if there would be some issue in the implementation, would that be noticeable? Okay, so that's not tested here. That's probably gonna fail it now. Okay, that's failing it, but that's also not gonna fail it. Okay, so these two lines are speculative. These here, and this is the key, the key of it. And forgetting to clear it should probably also do something weird now. Okay, it also does something weird. Good. Good. So, so it's probably doing the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I try to assert here. Yeah, it's probably doing something useful. I'm always a bit concerned about this here that I get this right. Like, is this the comparison you want? Yeah, but we don't have a test for that. Right? I mean, yeah. ideally, we would have a test that sorts exactly this case. Yeah. But... I mean, it's more about the did you get the ordering right? And the only thing I can say is, okay, by default, that's ascending. Zero comes first, then comes one, and so on. And this turns that around. So high numbers are first, and that's the time being more recent. Yeah. That should be first in line. Then we add this first to the queue, so it get, gets processed more early. This is what we want. So that seems to be correct. And that's as far as my reasoning goes here. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't have a test to really validate that reasoning, unfortunately. But yeah, that's a, I think a real, that's a great addition. I think next time we would have to understand a bit better what this early exit is about, whether we need it or not. It says performance, right? So performance is not the most important thing for us just yet. Um, the finishing death computation is something I'd want, even though we don't have a test. So maybe we can make one even if it's hard, and then this is done, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the gave up on. Maybe this is something that we can do. Uh, can do with the test as well, because we should have some candidates, candidate limit that is so low that it will run into it, and then maybe we can tune our names so that we need, we need to implement this the right way yeah. to get the right value. Maybe we can do that, maybe. So I, I have hope. So for next time, maybe gave up on, and lastly, finished computation, then this is done in the best way we can imagine. Right That's now. probably also gonna be, I, I'm guessing we'll both find a bit more about this, right? When we would implement it more or closer to the application level, because there's, I guess, some functionality that has to be handled by the caller of our function at the moment. Oh yeah. So maybe, yeah. True. I don't know if this would be the next step for us, but I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot to discover there as well. Uh, that's that's right. To me, that seems to be the boring part because it's really just creating the hash set. I think the hash set of names or the hash map of names and doing that seems quite straightforward, but it will be some some work for sure and some tests to be written on, on a higher level Git repository probably. But yeah, not quite there yet. Like these two things, they're probably also worth two sessions or so, um, especially if you want to have a test for that. But yeah, for today, I think we're we're good. Oh, yeah, it's still running. The previous one actually really broke it, but now all green, all good. And I say thanks for watching and have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.